December 1991, Lady Di and Prince Charles' marriage has long since grown cold. The rumors of affairs and a divorce abound. Peace is ordained for the Christmas festivities at Sandringham Estate. There's eating and drinking, shooting and hunting. Diana knows the game, but this year things will be a whole lot different. This is Spencer on Night of the Movies on the Cross Border Interviews. Is she here yet? Not yet, ma'am, no. Then she's late. Yes, she is late. Your Royal Highness. Mummy! <laughs> family are all gathered in the drawing room. They are waiting. Serious about you. So stand very still and smile a lot. They know everything. They don't. Mummy, what happened to make you so sad? Well, here, in this house, there is no future. The past and the present are the same thing. Diana. They can't change. You have to change. You have to be able to do things you hate. You hate? There has to be two of you. There's the real one <laughs> and the one they take pictures of. <laughs> Diana, for the good of the country. For the country? Kill me, do you think? So, Michael, Michael, Michael. Um, royal fans unite. When this movie first dropped, there was a lot of speculation of if Kristen Stewart could actually do justice to Princess Diana. I think you and I had discussed that at, at some point in time. Uh, we have talked about this show in passing on the uh, Cross Border Interviews Entertainment Rundowns when it first got released last year. But you've watched it. I've watched it. What were your initial thoughts of Spencer? Okay, so this is where it's a little like, I might go off the rails a little bit. The story was weird. Mm -hmm. I think it was interesting telling like a snapshot moment in Diana's life. However, doing that in the guise of psychological thriller a la Get Out was a bit bizarre. It felt like we were waiting for like the jump out, like, oh, like I was waiting to be scared. And I'm like, this is- Queen Elizabeth like just Christmas. jumps up and goes, Hello. Yeah, like I'm waiting for like someone to say like, oh, Queen Elizabeth secretly is like a mass murderer like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, or like, oh, the zombies have been invading. Like something, it felt like it needed that. Uh, I will say the costumes, amazing. Ne like fucking amazing. Oh, so good. And then Kristen Stewart was kind of awesome. I'm not, uh, Kristen Stewart's a good actress and I am tired of pretending like she's not because she did Twilight movies. Just like I'm tired of pretending Robert Pattinson's a bad actor because he did the Twilight movies. I really, I really liked her performance. I felt the costumes were really good. I'll just say the story was just weird. It had all the, the thought of being like really kind of unique and groundbreaking and not just being a Princess Diana dying story as, as all of Everything people like to is. really do. Yeah, I, I, I just, as a Diana, I, 
I, I just can't, I don't know. I just, I like Kristen and I like the costumes. Okay. I want to break this down as simply as possible. Oh God. We, we watched a two hour episode of The Crown. That's all we did. And I'll be honest, I did not enjoy it. I think okay. you're right. The story was too locked in. It's a different take on the royal movies that have been coming out. And I, get, I grant that. I just, I was not a fan. And we talked- You were about, not a Diphana? Diphana. <laughs> we talked about it on a past episode where we talked about The Lost Daughter. And we talked about how Olivia Coleman carried that movie. Yeah. I would say the same for this movie. Stuart carried this movie without oh, sure. like, and maybe someone else could have done something differently, but I didn't like the acting from Charles. Didn't oh, like, God, didn't, no. no. And that's what bothered me. And I, when I watched it, I think I told you on the show, actually, Stuart's going to be nominated for this role. A, because let's be honest, the Academy loves a fucking royal story and they'll fucking... They're uh, also Diapanas. They are. Anytime someone does a royal movie, they get nominated. Olivia Coleman. Um, why did we not see Diana the Musical nominated then? Oh, it did for Razzies. <laughs> no, I'm talking about for the Oscar, baby. Because th there is a standard. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, yeah, I went there. Um, I... I had hope for the movies and I know a lot of people are giving Stuart a lot of flack right now because she shouldn't be there. Gaga should be there for House of Gucci. Watch them. And I, I think there's a lot of people who've only watched House of Gucci for Lady Gaga and think she's amazing. I, I, I challenge them to actually watch this movie and take out the story, take out the actual shitty acting from all the other actors. Watch Stuart do a master class on royal acting because yeah. she her and i know her past is not exactly like uh, uh diana's but with her coming out as a lesbian her being forced to basically have a relationship with robert pattison during uh the twilight years this was sort of life imitating art in some ways of her just wanting to get out and be her own self. And I give her credit because she was able to showcase the trauma and the emotions that Diana was going through during those formidable years before the lead up to her divorce in 93 to 92, whatever year they divorced. So I, I give them- I don't like to think about that. Why? Because now we have Camilla. When she, what? Yeah. Which, um, I listened to an episode of the Blog Talk with Michael a few weeks ago, and they talked about Camilla, and I'm just saying that was very rude of you to talk about the Queen's consort like that. Fuck Camilla. She is going to be my queen, and I will bow my Jump head. Jump off to a roof. Nope. I'm jumping off a roof when she's clean. <clears throat> so let's go to the star ratings. Michael, what did you think? What would you give this out of a good old five? I mean, I kind of want to give it a three because she it kept me entertained. It kept me engaged. I really like the costumes. I like the set. I thought that as a whole, like a lot of the technical pieces were good and the acting was very good. I just, the story just was weird and a lot of the other than Stuart a lot of the acting was just rough um I just I was waiting for it to go in one direction that they were very obviously trying to push and it just was like <sighs> didn't go there fully it didn't wah, fully come wah, in wah. yeah I'm gonna be less generous than you I'm gonna give it the exact same rating I gave the lost daughter and that is two I think, and I, I give it just because Stuart was the best. If you took Stuart out, it would have been Diana the musical. I don't know if I'd go that far as someone who has actually watched. Did you watch Diana the musical? I have, because now that I've done the Oscars, I'm moving on to all the Razzies, which let's be honest, 
I'm not There's a lot of Bruce for, Willis films. I'm not looking forward to the Bruce Willis film. So I I I will I will be I'll be generous and I'll say two because like you okay. said, Stuart was the best part. I'm happy she got the nomination. She is now broken away from her uh Twilight genre because a lot of people were pigeonholing her saying oh you're twilight while robert pattison has been doing tenant and all this shit this is uh kristen stewart's moment to say i'm not the person of the past i'm an actual actress who can actually do emotions and show a range of different skills then i don't know if i should be a werewolf or a vampire well this is the thing with robert pattinson he like tenant was his first like break since twilight oh what did he do after twilight because i don't feel like it was a whole hell of a lot cosmopolitan what is that uh david oh he's a canadian actor he did a canadian director he did uh crash i not paul haggis uh it's it's basically him being a struggling uh, alcoholic it's actually cut quite a good movie cosmopolis Cosmopolis, there you go. Yeah, sorry. Um, that was at the same time as Breaking Dawn. But it was right after Breaking Dawn. Like it came No, out. it came out before. Oh, did it? Okay. Yeah, it came out before Breaking Dawn Part Two. Okay. And then he did a lot of like meh sort of movies. And it wasn't until like 2019 when he did The Lighthouse that he really started to be taken seriously. And now. He's Batman. He's vengeance. He's Batman. He's vengeance. Which I've been hearing glowing reviews for that. So I've heard it's awesome. I know. Um, but that was Spencer with a really bad tangent on Robert Patterson <laughs> on Night of the Movies, <laughs> cross-border interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols Mate. <laughs> <laughs>